Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I am at Natchez National Historical Park. Historical or historic? I don't know why, but they decided to call it historical. And this is at the Melrose. Right now, I've got a new antenna to try out. I have the MFJ1898, and this is very similar to another antenna that we reviewed on the channel here recently, except that it uses a 3 8 24 mount. So I'm gonna get this thing set up. Now that we have this thing out of the bag, there are two main pieces with this. This whip is somewhere between six and a half and seven foot long, and it's a fairly delicate whip at the, at the outer extremities here, but you know, we're, we're careful. We, we know what we're doing here. And this has a 3 8 24 thread. So with the proper adapters, you could use this seven foot whip all by itself and get on whatever magical band you think you might be able to get on with a six to seven foot long antenna. And to show that this is 3 8 by 24, there is the 3 8 by 24 stud down the bottom. And that will work. And then there's the one that you put it on on top. And that also appears to be 3 8 by 24. In order to use an antenna like this with a 3 8 24 mount, you're gonna need some additional hardware. And what I have is a hardware store nail or tent spike. So they actually call this a nail tent spike. And then I have the dipole mount, which gives me an SO239 on the bottom, a 3 8 24 on the top, and a second 3 8 24. So if I wanted to mount this horizontally like a dipole, with another antenna, I could do that. What I've done instead is I have set up some Anderson power poles for some counterpoise, and they are connected directly to that bolt. And you can leave these in place if you're using the dipole. So right here, we go into 3 8 24 mode. There you go. All right, so how does this antenna actually do its magic? First off, you're gonna need some ground radials. I have a set of 10 meter long radials that I spread out in whatever direction I actually can do in the area that I'm at. The most important part is to get wire on the ground to act as your counterpoise for the vertical antenna. You need to have something to push against in both directions. So that's why we need the radials. People talk about many shorter radials or tuned radials or many, many, many radials. The argument is all over the map. This is a portable operation and I have found that the 10 meter times four works fantastically. So I'm not gonna mess with it. If you have something that works a little bit better, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to hear about it. After you have your radial set up, at the bottom of the antenna is a little adjustable, hand tightenable, hand loosenable nut here. And that allows you to extend the coil and you can kind of hear that so it's making an electrical connection inside of the antenna there is a sticker here that has graduations on it and they're not really any kind of specific measurement it's just a reference for you so you can take notes where you find which band you want to operate on and the notes go from 0 to 17 and 3 quarters or so I guess almost 18 let's just say almost 18 and this will work for seven through 30 megahertz and also 50 megahertz. So there's a, quite a bit of versatility in this little antenna. And what you would do if you have a nano VNA or some other device like that that shows you what your SWR is, you can slide this out and take a measurement and see where it is. And then you can shrink it up and shrink it down to get on the band that you were actually interested in being on. And after you figure out where it is, make a note. So as an example, Let's say that if I put this at three, I know that it works on 20 meters. So I'll put it at three, I will lock it in place by turning the collar, and then I'll go in my notebook and I'll say 20 meters is three, and we're good to go. Let's go get it set up and get on the air. So the antenna is just how I have it installed. I don't have anything special going on. It looks like I am, can we focus? Looks like I'm all the way at the top of my graduations there. So it's fully extended, four 10 meter radials and some coax. Let's see what our Dr. VNA tells us. I'm going to recall my saved configuration. I am at 10 to one on my SWR and I'm at 14 megahertz, 20 meter band. So we are way high for 20 meters, but I don't even know where we are to begin with. So let's change our stimulus start and this is a seven megahertz 
to 30 megahertz antenna. And fully extended, we are beyond 30 megahertz. Let's go make some adjustments. And real quick, with the trend going down, seven megahertz over here, 30 megahertz over here, that means that our antenna is too short. All right, so I just randomly added in some coil and what I have is 1.1 SWR at 16 megahertz. And the random number that I chose was three. I'm gonna shoot for 20 meters. 20 meters happens to be one of my favorite bands to work on for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Uh, so let's see, what do we need to do? We need to, hmm. I'm gonna try making it longer. I'm gonna go from three to five. All right, let's see. All right, so that's at five, 12.9 megahertz, 1.5 to one, 1.4 to one, 12.5. So that was too far. Let's go between three and five is four. Let's try four. All right, so it did move up. And where are we? 14,360 at 1.1. So what I could do is I could move it up just a half. Let's go to four and a half. All right, so that's 13,440 at 1.2. That was the wrong direction. Let's go three and a half. All right, so we are at 15 at 1.0 SWR at three and a half. I need to make it a little bit longer. All right, we are at three and three quarters. Three and three quarters is 14.5 at 1.0, but I'm still at that seven megahertz to 30 megahertz range. Let's change our stimulus to start at 13 megahertz and stop at 15 megahertz. And this gets us more reference points to check. And I am 1.14260, so one and a half to one. Not bad. All right, so I could spend the entire day getting this thing fine-tuned into 1.0 to one. Or I could go play radio at 1.4, 1.5. I'm gonna go play radio at 1.4, 1.5 as the breeze blows, as the coax moves, as all kinds of variables take shape, the SWR is gonna change a little bit anyway. So that being said, this setting right here works for this antenna with these ground radials, with this coax in this neighborhood. So I can't tell you what numbers are gonna work in your area and they're going to change when you move from area to area but you can get very close to in the ballpark and then do some fine tuning when you finally get there and have some fun experimenting with it. You've got a nano VNA, you've got a radio with a built-in SWR meter. That's what this is all about, is getting out and having fun. And you will find as you move from location to location that your SWR changes. Now I've got a park to activate. All right, so today I'm gonna to use my ICOM 705 and this is my ICOM 705 go bag that holds my radio, my battery, my microphone, some coax, my USB cables, my power cord, so I can get on the air. And I'm going to use the TO solar generator. So we've got power. Let's get to it. There will be a video for the 705 go bag up there and for the solar generator also up there. Radio things about the SWR. All right, so the radio is happier the higher we go in the band. You can see we start off at about 1.3 and we end off at about 1.1. It <laughs> sounds like somebody's got box on, taking a walk. Is the frequency in use? Is the frequency in use? Kilo, Mike 9 Golf. Checking the frequency, checking the frequency. Is the frequency in use? Kilo, Mike 9 Golf. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Poda. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf, KM9G, calling CQ Parks on the Air from Natchez National Historic Park in Natchez, Mississippi. Kilo Mike 9 Golf in Mississippi, QRZ.
Whew, that took about an hour and a half to get 10 contacts in the log. It seemed like it took forever. Band conditions were a little weird. There was hardly anybody on the band except for the Ohio, the Ohio State Parks on the Air contest today, which was, you know, happening inside of regular parks. So they were doing both parks on the air and Ohio State Parks on the air. But I did not have a good path to Ohio. Everything I had was down in the noise here, and I don't know the geography of the area, so I don't know if it's me or not. But as always, it's a fun day in the park. All right, we have the battery box, the radio station, and the Nano VNA and the Tiny SA. We've got some coax. We have radials, the antenna, and the mounting system for the antenna. What I like about this setup is it's all very compact. This antenna could very easily fit in that bag, I am sure, at the very least, on some of the molly straps on top or whatever. I would like to find a better bag for this, but that is a future video. All that potering worked me up an appetite. I had to stop off and get some food. Check this out. We are upgrading from gas station food, although they actually have this stuff at gas stations here in Mississippi and Louisiana. This is weird. This is uh, catfish, hush puppies, macaroni and cheese, peach cobbler, and cornbread. Don't y'all wish you were here? Even though it's a compromise, I really am a big fan of using that antenna because of its small size and its ease of setup and its versatility. That is one antenna that gets me on a handful of bands and makes it very agile to use and very compact to carry with me. A lot of other antennas require a seven meter mast, a 10 meter mast. They require throwing a weight up into a tree. They require a whole lot of things and vertical antennas are very, very fast to deploy. This thing compacts down smaller than your 17 foot whips, which makes it ideal for fitting into a backpack and carrying with you on an airplane or something along those lines, which is very, very helpful. This antenna, I, a similar antenna to this one, I took with me to my trip to Arizona. I took it with me for a couple of parks on the air activations. I worked with it at the home QTH. It is very easy to set up. And if you have a mount on your car, your car makes a fantastic ground plane for this antenna. Use the coax that's going to your radio station inside the car and get after it easy style. That's gonna be coming up in a future video as well. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel to see that. There are links in the description down below for all of the things that I talked about and showed in this video. And this was another successful Parks on the Air activation in the bag. There's a video right here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.